One of the questions I've been asked a lot is, what is better, color finale or cinema grade? And this is one of those questions that it's hard to answer because it's all opinion based. It's all about what I think, right? It's the same question or the same discussion people have on the internet of what is better, uh, Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere or Resolve. At the end of the day, if you learn a program and you learn to use it well, you're, you're gonna become very efficient in it and you're gonna prefer it over other programs. Well, the same thing is with Color Finale and Cinema Grade. I learned Color Finale uh, before Cinema Grade ever came out, so I do have a preference for it. Um, but now that I've sat down and I've and, you know I've played around with both programs with uh, Cinema Grade, I've learned it. I'm gonna talk to you about uh, you know I'll give you an in-depth um, view of the two programs, and you can skip ahead in order to look at that. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go a little bit more into detail about uh, why I prefer Color Finale. You know. Uh, first of all, you know, the, the, the short answer is that color finale, I feel is, uh, or, you know, in my opinion, it's a more advanced color grading suite. Um, so for colorists or people that get paid for video work, I would say that you want to get color finale because you, it opens up or it has more advanced features. Whereas cinema grade, it gets rid of a lot of those advanced features like, uh, color wheels and color curves and creating masks. Also, the workflow, uh, it's way better in Color Finale. Um, also, another question people ask me is, do I need Color Finale when, you know, the tools that are built into Final Cut Pro 10 right now are really good? And I'd say yes, if you're getting paid for work, if you're editing a lot of video, it's going to speed up your workflow. You're going to save a bunch of time because you can quickly switch between the different tools and uncheck them uh you with color finale it's not as quite as fast with with uh the built-in tools in final cut pro 10 now cinema grade i feel like it's just adds extra steps at a, you know every time it's just like you have to apply changes and you have to open up a new window you can't play the color grade in real time um maybe it might be great for short edits people that are just getting started uh but not for me my workflow Again, I want to access to color wheels and color curves. The things they did to simplify it also made it, um, it limits what you can do in it, right, basically. Uh, so that's just my opinion. It, you know, they both cost around the same price. It's $100, $250 if you want the pro versions. Uh, so I'd say that if you're, if you know, since price is the same, you might as well go with Color Finale. Again, that's my opinion. Now let's jump into the computer and I'll show you exactly uh, how to, you know, I'll do a little comparison of both. All right, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10 and I'm not going to really show you how, how to color grade with both programs. There's videos on that you can find. Um, I'm just going to show you the some of the differences um, and also the workflow of working with Color Finale versus uh, Cinema Grade. So I'm going to apply, let's start off with Color Finale Pro. I'm going to apply it to this video clip. I'm going to show you how you would convert this S-Log3 footage to Rec. 709. Uh, so if you go to the color management, there's this, there's three options. Assume log. It does a fairly good job. Uh, you still have to play with the exposure and the contrast and the pivot to get it to a good spot. Uh, but overall, it does a pretty good job. You can also use ACES. This is also something that's used with uh, that that uh, Cinema Grade uses. You tell it uh, what color space you're using. In this case, S Lock Three. And that's it, and then it's a hit and miss trying to find a good one. Uh, you can see here, it's just like it's not quite right. Um, so Aces, when S Lock Zoom uh, Lock doesn't work, I go to Aces, and then if Aces doesn't work, sometimes I use uh, Input LUT to convert it to Rec. 709. However, most of the time, what I'm using now is uh, Assume Video Does Nothing. And actually, I'll show you here in this video clip already color graded. I said Assume Video, which is does nothing. If we look at the layers, when we open up Color Finale, there's three, three different layers I added. Let me uncheck these so you can see what I did. I added a curves. So that way, I could add my own contrast. I control exactly how I wanted the image to look. This is super powerful for anyone who's doing uh, professional color grading or you want more control, then curves are super good to have. You know, you can take out, take out colors and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, these are already built into Final Cut Pro 10 if you wanted to work with curves. However, I like the Color Finale panel because it's easier for me to uncheck all of these 
and uh, quickly move between my different modes. Um, yeah, so you see there, uh, you can also add color wheels and push certain colors into the shadows and the highlights. Uh, like if you wanted the teal and orange look, instead of using a LUT, you could do it with the color wheels. Uh, however, I did it here with the LUT and, um, you know, there's a LUT previewer here. You can see, quickly see all the different LUTs. Uh, these are LUTs that I bought online. And uh, that's really cool to have with Color Finale. Uh, then you have the vectors also included in Cinema Grade. You can change the hue, the saturation, and luminosity of certain colors. Here, I changed the hue of the blue. Um, yeah, so th that's just uh, something to look at when uh, looking at Color Finale. You can also apply masks to your different layers and pretty advanced features. Uh, you also have the HSL curves uh, with color finale. Uh, and then temperature, tint, saturation, sharpness tool is really good here in color finale. Uh, what's built into Final Cut Pro 10 is nowhere as neat as, as, as good as the sharpness tool. Uh, you can also do image analysis. Um, here it is. You can do false colors to gauge your measure. I use the ellipse, ellipse tool to see where my skin is at. I can see looking at the vector scope if I need to make adjustments to the skin. Usually that's what I use it for. Uh, then there's a color chart and also you can add film grain to your footage um, if you wanted to. Uh, this is with the pro version. And that's pretty much a look into color finale. Now let's look at cinema grade. I'm going to apply it to this clip. Cinema grade, drop it in, open controls. And here's the first glitch in Cinema Grade. Maybe it'll, it'll get updated in the future. The way, reason you can't see the Cinema Grade uh, panel right now is because I'm in full screen mode. I need to exit. And now, the since I have two screens right now, you can't look at my two screens. I'm only recording my main screen. Now I can drag it over to my main screen. If I do full size and open controls, you know, it kind of exits out of Final Cut Pro 10 because it has its own window. So in order for me to see both in the same window in the same screen, I need to exit the full screen, open controls, and now I can see both the Cinema Grade and the Final Cut Pro 10 on the same uh, on the same monitor. All right. Uh, so to convert this to Rec 709, you hit this arrow. You can input your own LUT to convert it, or you use uh, I think this is the Aces. Select the color space S Log 3. And then it's a hit and miss trying to find a good one. Um, if I wanted to use curves, uh, there's no such things as curves here. Cinema grade is supposed to be make it very simple for you to color grade. But the drawback with that is that you don't have full control. You can't you the curves are more advanced future, which is disabled here. Also, the color wheels, you can see it's not here. The the only thing you can use is exposure, the highlights, midtones, and the shadows and contrast in order to get your image to this, where you want it to be. And you're going to have to play around with that. Um, yeah. And then you can add saturation, tint, and all this kind of stuff. It, it also has the vectors, which is a way to change the hue of a certain color. So it's really cool to have that. Uh, then um, with, with, with Cinema Grade, uh, they have these sliders. So if I wanted to quickly change the exposure or the contrast of an image, you know, I can quickly slide up and down. You can also select, uh, you know, the the temperature and just slide up and down. I think there's keys for that, like W is for color temperature, and then C is for contrast adjustment. So it should theoretically speed up your workflow. I just don't like working with sliders. I'd rather look at, um, these numbers here see what i'm doing instead of just um you know sliding up and down uh, but that's up to you this is something that's that's um, a cool feature with cinema grade is just not something that i am crazy about and then you have over here the different vector scopes waveforms that way you can gauge your your exposure okay shot matching in order to do shot matching it's really advanced it's really cool feature of cinema grade let me exit, exit out of here. Oh, here's another thing. 
anytime I try to exit out of cinema grade, I have to apply changes. Now I have to select the uh, copy the the uh, cinema grade and paste it into my other clips, paste them. Now, if I open up the controls and go to shot matching, now I can see the different shots and I can make this my hero shot and and I can also create different groups. So let's say the, this is one group and then I can go and create a second group, right? If I'm going to apply different color grades or, or do different things to the shots, um, then you can match the shots this way, you know, change the exposure and all this stuff. All right. Uh, groups. So that's really cool to have here with cinema grade. That's pretty advanced. Uh, then you the final grading. You can apply a LUT here. Again, you have the LUT loader viewer. Um, really cool to have. Uh, you can apply the grid sept. You can see there it applied to group two. And then we can also apply to uh, wait group one. We can apply a different LUT, maybe a um, I don't know, a black and white and hit accept. You can see it applied uh, different LUTs or different looks to the two groups. Um, there he is. And then just uh, hit apply. Oh, another thing you can also change, um, still change some of the midtones exposure, the, the, the mix, what do you call it? The intensity of that LUT here. Um, so again, you get access to the vectors and all this stuff. That's pretty advanced stuff here in Cinema Grade. Hit apply and then select grade, all grades, supply change. I don't know why it's asking me this uh, over and over again. I'm going to say do not show this message again. And then I have to exit out. And then you can see there I applied different colors to the groups. Um, I like working with adjustment layers. This is what I did with uh, Color Finale here. Um, the adjustment layers can also work with uh, Cinema Grade. And if you're trying to do a comparison viewer, uh, Final Cut Pro 10 already has it. Like if you're trying to do shot matching, I mean, uh, you can see here, I can, this is my main clip. I'm trying to match it to this. You can also take screenshots and um, of saved you can you can save different screens in order to um, do comparisons so that's something to look at if you're doing the comparison viewer oh I, I was supposed to select this up here save frame like that and that's how you would do it not as I, I don't think it's advanced as advanced as a cinema grade uh, but still, I, I, we know the what you gain with using um, something like uh, Color Finale is that you can see your changes in real time. So if I open up the layers and as I, I play this, oh, wrong, wrong key. If I play this, I can see, I can turn off the LUT and I can see what it did to my image in real time. I can play it in real time. Um, with if I'm trying if I'm trying to make changes on the fly here and I maybe take off all the saturation, I can see it in real time. You see that as I'm playing the video. You can't quite make changes here in Cinema Grade. I can't do that in real time. I have to open up this new window in order to make changes and I can't pl really play it. I mean, I can scrub forward to the different parts of the video, but I can't play it. If that makes sense. All right. So those I would say are the major differences between color finale and cinema grade. One of the things I forgot to mention is that if you want film grain in cinema grade, you need to purchase separately. That's another 50 us dollars. So given the price points, um, I would totally, you know, go with Color Finale. That's just my opinion. Um, you're welcome to dis disagree. I want to hear from you. If you use both, uh, go ahead and drop your your comments down in the comment section. Also, if you have any questions, anything that I forgot to answer, I want to hear from you. Uh, there'll be links in the description to both programs down below if you want to check them out. And that's it. That does it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.